And looks so nice next to Yvonne's work. Mm -hmm. The yeah. colors. Are there specific pieces from the antiquities that you're working from, or is it more of a generic? Oh no, these are very uh, specific. This is from a. This is Yvonne's work. Uh, what would you? Uh, I'm the name. There's a very. Uh, this Are is there a, specific no. pieces from the antiquities that you're working from, or is it more of a generic? I hear the echo. Uh, I, I think this is um, a, a, a sculpture I had called uh, Flavian Woman, I think. Um, uh, I went through a whole period where I was interested in uh, uh, Greco-Roman uh, sculpture and painting. Uh, so that inspired uh, some, of this, uh, some of this work. When it references the God's eye that uh, Ivan was talking about earlier as well. To me. Uh, Ivan, are you still on there? Yes. Yeah, let's get in close to this one next to there. And uh, you can tell us, you can explain the photograph. You, you can see it a little clearer in this one, the actual yeah, photograph. Yeah, the actual photograph slit. Tell us the yeah, story. Yeah, that, that, that piece is called Ra, so the sun god. And it's created out of a photograph of a sunset in Brooklyn. It was a little time when I lived in Brooklyn. Um, I was actually working for an incredible artist in the studio, uh, St. Clair Semin, uh, incredible sculptor. And I spent the whole year, I think that was like six, six years ago, uh, I spent the whole year working as his main assistant in the studio and I created uh, I actually no I created that work much later but that the photograph was shot from my roof in Brooklyn when I was living there but the piece actually got created later um, so yeah I mean it's the same series uh, God Particle um, but I wanted to touch upon something. So like to make something is to make something, but where do these ideas come from, right? So that's that's more like something that I'm, I'm interested in. And I still I, I still can't figure that out. Because uh, see, uh, Yaron was just saying that some of his work is very intentional. And for me, like it's more intuitive. So my studio is like a laboratory of ideas and it and it's like a, i just try stuff i try i try and so sometimes i will you know spend like three months uh just trial and error and then i was just try this try this and, and it wouldn't work and i would create like 100 pieces and 101st would be you know one piece and then I'm like, oh, like this is it, right? And then when I get that one piece that works, then I kind of hone into it and I like start developing the whole series and get all technical and, you know, intentional and so on. But I think that first, you know, impulse, that first, uh, like how I, how I like create something is, is very, it's literally like a laboratory. So it's very, you know, I have no idea what I'm doing, kind of. And then I'm like, trying this, try that, try this, try that. And then, boom, you get that one piece and it's like, that's it, that's it, that works. And that one idea kind of emerges as like almost like a winner, you know? And, and it kind of talks to me and it go and says like, this is it, that's the series, that go, go with that, go with that. And then you know, out of that one piece, I'll create another 10 that, that get created intentionally as a series. But yeah, that's, that's something, uh, you know, and then also meditation. Um, so I've been meditating for a good 10 years every morning. I, it, 
literally do it as brushing my teeth 20 minutes in the morning. And that's been a real, real help to my like mental health and, you know, uh, maintaining that peace and joy throughout the day. And I think also my art is something that brought me a lot of, you know, comfort and peace and that like channeling that creativity. Uh, I grew up in a worn torn country. So when I was 10, I grew up in Serbia or Yugoslavia at that time. So when I was 10, the war started and that was going on till I was 20. So very, so very dark time, but now remembering that time, it was also like really fun because we kind of did whatever we wanted. So it wasn't your like regular life because we, we just thought like, oh, this is our last day here. So might as well have fun. So it was in a way, it was very like traumatic and like tragic, but on the other hand, it was like so much fun because we just got to do stuff that you would never be able to do in a, a normal settings. And, but then I think the whole time, like art has been really like this, like saving grace from photography to paintings, to going to museums, to movies and plays and books and music. Like it's been really like something that you know, like now I'm pretty happy, I'm content, everything's great. But there was times in my past where, you know, it was, you know, you were just holding on for dear life. And in those moments, like some, like a good book or a good, you know, music or a good piece of art would just make so much, you know, would make all the difference. And it basically like kept me alive. So wow. like... Yeah, so that's that's something like that. My whole my my every almost every body of work I have has that healing and soothing and you know um, vibration to it, you know, for me and then hopefully for the viewers. And I get that a lot from other people as well. Yeah, and these are you know, if we were in a normal time and you could see them in person, you can you know connect even more with you know both artists. Um, but truly amazing work again. Does anyone from uh, the audience have any questions for either artist? So, Yaron, uh, um, it's, uh, um, do you have any, you know, uh, you grew up in Israel, right? So is there any childhood, um, Memories, that's another kind of uh, uh, interesting um, uh, similarity between the two of you. Uh, do, do you have any memories about uh, the sort of things that were going on when, when you were a child and did, did that influence your artistic development? Well, I, I will say that uh, if, you know, uh, if you look at that, the zigzag art, this is not something, you know, I didn't experience a trauma in Israel. It was actually uh, a lovely place to be. Uh, but if you look at uh, those zigzags, it, um, just in terms of, uh, you know, just thinking back to uh, uh, what inspired me to make them, I have this, you know, this, you know, it's this like obscure memory of looking at a brochure uh, and telling a, must've been like a two or three year old not to touch an electrical socket. And it had a zigzag on it. And for whatever reason that has always stayed with me, uh, maybe it's silly. I don't even really know, but um, I think that uh, just as an artist, in order to, to be authentic, uh, it's helpful to find things that are very personal um, and uh, that are really outside, even of any kind of artistic conversation that are unique to you. And um, I think that I kind of dredged that up, uh, uh, maybe just because I have a very young son, and I, I don't know what really kind of you know uh, inspired this, but. Um, this was, this is, uh, I see the zigzag starting in this piece is an earlier piece than these brand new ones with that pattern is, uh, was, is that a relation or did it just, just re spark itself? Uh, I, I, um, I think that I always wanted to do, uh, this is more of like a rhythmic zigzagginess, um, mm -hmm. uh, the individual independent zigzags is what I'll call them. Uh, that, that, I don't, you know, that just came, um. Uh, that was something that, I, that I've, I've played with a little bit, but I, I never really took it very far. I think it's um, uh, important as, as an artist, not to just to create something, but to uh, let it evolve. 
uh, and to um, let it become uh, something else um, and to not uh, feel satisfied with it. Uh, even with this series, I made it very quickly and I, I'm, I'm curious to see uh, where else it can go. I mean, the, the, the zigzags themselves, I, I you know, not, I have, um, if you go to um, the snake handler uh, image, which is uh, kind of closer to the window, um, the smaller one uh, across the gallery, uh, strange things started to happen. As you know, this was not part of my, it's, yes, it's the lower snake handler image. Uh, the zigzag started to uh, expand, to, to be longer and, and to have a, a certain kind of like, um, uh, there, there, there's, you know, if you go in this kind of like a, like, like a flat zigzag, you know, and then a, an, an angled, 30 degree angle one. I don't know, I wasn't planning that, but as I saw what the potential was for this kind of mark, uh, I, um, I started, you know, I, I start, you know, grasping on to uh, what its potential is. Um, and uh, yeah, so I feel like I know more about that zigzag now. Uh, you know, I never thought I'd talk about zigzags in this way, but um, uh, yeah, so, 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 uh, so hopefully this uh, kind of imagery will uh, go someplace else also. Excellent. Yeah, it has an electrical energy to it. Has a, yeah. That brochure, that weird brochure. I mean, you know, wh wh where does something come from, right? Uh, here, this, this is the one, one of the ones that preceded it, the one uh, above it. Um, yeah, actually, this is kind of interesting, just the arrangement over here. If you look at the uh, image in the top right, um, just in terms of how uh, quickly some of this work can evolve, a uh, top other right. Uh, yeah, so this was uh, one of the first zigzag images. Uh, and it has a kind of like a plain, kind of blocky kind of a quality to it. Uh, and then the one beneath it was the next one. Uh, and here the zigzags are more extreme. I don't know if I you know, fully uh, grasped what the potential was for, for a, a zigzag. And then you move to the, to the left uh, and, and you'll see uh, that it's different. Uh, it's, it's evolved somehow, it's become something else. Um, so who knows, maybe I'll get ready for uh, dashes and dots and, and you, know, uh, you know, give me ideas, folks, you know? We've definitely <laughs> done the zigzag justice. I mean, I feel like if there was a trademark for the zigzag, you would own it. It's amazing, this stuff. Especially when we're seeing it, how it can evolve just so skillfully the closer as he goes in on the camera. It's like a perfect geometric puzzle. Uh, and then Do you, you like geometry as a kid? Eh, what I get on my uh, geometry, I think I, I think I did okay. I, I got a B. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's also you can see over here. There's like weird flower things on on the right. Uh, there's like some just in terms of what what, what uh, you know. Yeah, there's some weird kind of like what is that? I don't really know. But I started making these kind of like uh, are they dandelions? I don't know what they are. Uh, but uh, kind of housed within these uh, zigzags, I think that was kind of a cool effect. Uh, because you could, you know, it 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 uh, adds uh, a certain dimensionality to them. You could look into the zigzags instead of them just being uh, flat marks. Aaron, is the use of mainly black and white deliberate? Um, well, I mean, I, you know, th there's also um, uh, uh, you know painted imagery, but uh, a lot of um, uh, optical imagery is um, uh, uses uh, uh, black and white um, rhythmic marks. Uh, if you see uh, just all the famous optical illusions, um, for whatever reason, uh, uh, they're black and white, and that's uh, the way the eye responds uh, to, to these rhythms. Your own, yeah. can I ask a question? Of course. Um, I'm interested, the zigzag paintings, the, the ones that you do with the tape, you have to plan those all out in advance. The zigzag painting, do you do sketches or do they, like when you were talking about things that look like dandelions, does that just evolve as you're sitting there and doing your work or have you, do you sketch it out first and plan it all first before you actually commit pen to paper? Well, I, I, I'm going to say that that, that, that that this image over here is one of my favorite images in the show. Uh, it's a small little piece, uh, but what I like about it is that it is uh, one of the, uh, freest images that I made. I took a little pencil and just get, get, made like a general sketch of the face and you can see it's kind of abstract, it's loose, maybe even a little cartoonish. Um, and, and then I uh, just started to improvise around that. I, there was no plan to this. Uh, and, and I found it very uh, liberating compared to the uh, uh, planned ones. Uh, and and I'm, 
uh, I'm grateful for, for having uh, made an experiment like this, uh, mm -hmm. that, that I know I can make uh, imagery like this uh, that, is, um, uh, that is not planned. Cool, it's really cool. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Well, and then also I just wanna say that as I was working on this, I then took, uh, um, you know, I, I painted over uh, whole sections of it. Uh, not, not everything was uh, working for me. Uh, so I, I was able to uh, kind of uh, erase things and then um, uh, continue from there. Hopefully it's seamless enough that you uh, uh, don't see it, my suffering. Uh, is it possible, by the way, for me to share an image? Uh, yeah, sure. I, I just want to, uh, I'll just... Uh, One moment, I gotta, I gotta give you permission. Oh, okay. I, I don't have it open, so I, I just need a little moment over here. Just, okay. see, uh, just uh, let me see if I can find this. Uh, just because uh, just because I have the, oh, uh, here it is. Uh, okay. Uh, the, the image of uh, my grandfather that is to the right, is he, uh, is based on this image over here. Yeah. This is uh, an image that is very uh, uh, dear to me. It's, it's a, uh, a uh, drawing of my grandfather uh, that I made uh, in 2005, I think, or 2004, um, of him building a boat. He was always uh, uh, talking to me about boats, and we would, he would take me fishing, uh, and um, he didn't actually build a boat. He was a very old man at this point, but he did pose for it. Um, and this is one of the images that got me into art school. And this image is, it was the last image that I made before the show. Uh, it was, I was, I made it in like, like a day and a half. I just kind of, you know, zipped through it, uh, hoping to make uh, an image that uh, 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 was inspired by what I learned in art school. I went to an art school that uh, was designed to uh, uh, to, um, uh, uh, to show you how to experiment. I already came in with an image like this. I already could draw, but uh, that's what I could do. Uh, I knew nothing about the contemporary art scene uh, or anything really. Um, and they kind of uh, uh, broke me down and retrained me. And uh, I was able to create inventions uh, like this. So uh, it, it was kind of a, a way of, uh, of uh, closing the circle a little bit uh, before the show. That was... Uh, for just uh, very personal to me. I wanted to uh, share that with you folks. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, how, how important are your memories in your work? I mean, I know that your memory is a big part from seeing your daughter in work and having a memory there to seeing your grandfather here. You know, how does that particularly pick up? Oh, uh, oh, it's my son, by the way. Oh, son, sorry about that. That's okay. Um, uh, a memory of my work? Well, um, I, I certainly have a, a collection of, um, uh, of photographs uh, spanning uh, uh, my life that I keep returning to, uh, that I draw over and over again. Uh, uh, I teach uh, until recently at uh, Barnesdale. Uh, uh, and um, I always have students work uh, in a series uh, sometimes I think maybe they grumble, oh, I'm going to make uh, three or four or ten drawings of the same image, uh, and uh, why would we do that? Uh, and uh, I think it's a way of um, uh, examining, examining an image, and uh, each time that you um, uh, uh, draw it, it's going to be different, and it's going to be interesting, hopefully, and I think that you'll learn how to make the drawing by drawing it over and over again. Um, uh, and uh, new things emerge uh, uh, from the drawing. I think that after a while, the students really know the image really well. Uh, so, um, so uh, just in terms to you know to your point about memory, it's about uh, in a way um, a solidifying a memory, uh, going deep into a memory. Uh, I think uh, that's very interesting to me. Uh, uh, and lots of these, uh, I, I'm trying to remember uh, uh, the work in the show, uh, but. Uh, um, uh, oftentimes, I will, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, explore uh, the same image, but in, um, uh, but it's just completely different styles. Also, um, it's it's uh, it's the end point, really. It's not you know the starting point. You just want to have uh, some place that uh, interests you.
Uh, and incidentally, the, the image to the right, uh, Bruce, you, you're there, you're in the show, you and Mia. Uh, if you go to the right a little bit, uh, the, um, uh, the, the, oh, uh, other right, Izzy, sorry. That's the other uh, right. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the okay, person okay. selfie uh, has, has Bruce in it. Where? I'll keep going. Here we go. That's the one. Oh. Thank you. Oh, there you go. You're famous. There you go, Bruce. Yeah. Wow. What do you know? All my Bruce, kids. Everyone needs a self-portrait of themselves, Bruce. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> holding everyone. Up, it looks like I'm holding telling up, you, I, I got one in my house. Holding up an <laughs> i holding up an iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> and it's doing a selfie. What, what, what if, if you, your own, if you would put the, if you would put the Apple logo that you probably could have sold it to, you know, Steve Jobs' family or something. But your own, when you do a painting like that, do you paint Bruce and Mia first, and then that goes on top of it, or and do you know you're doing that, or is this you added later on? You revisited the same a painting and then decided to do the optical thing. Uh, well, well, first, Bonnie, I just want to say that this is Bruce in his natural state. So, so this this truly does represent uh, 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 what he'll look like when you see him. Uh, um, but but uh, in terms of how I made an image like this, I first uh, drew it out in pencil, uh, just uh, just the in a very loose way, uh, uh, the two heads. Uh, then I uh, created the uh, uh, the black and white uh, rhythmic um, element, uh, and then I uh, taped up that uh, that um, that's that area uh, and um, uh, painted over it, uh, uh, and then I and then I peeled away the tape. That's how I make an image like that. Well, it's incredible. And I thought, Om, is it okay? Can we open up for um, questions for the artist, for from everyone? Does anyone have any questions for us? I have a question, but it's not a specific artist question. So somehow I became the host, and there's someone named Jared Katz who wants to get in. Do I let him in? Yeah, that's, I, I, that's right my, yeah, Ron, yeah, Ron that's, is, um, yeah. So, yes, let him in. That's yeah, that's your own sister. I don't know. Okay, right. is she in? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, she's in. Okay. Thank you, so, Rob. Yeah, Ron, can you hear me? Yes. What I wanted to say is the picture of um, Grandpa, the um, conventional sketch, and then the one next to the zigzag, the zigzag makes him seem so much more alive. And the, the vibrations that it's kind of just, um, it, it, it comes to life. Mm -hmm. It is action, it seems there's action. You can see him working actually. Uh, yeah, well, well it, it's, uh, you know, when I was making the more conventional uh, drawing, um, I was uh, very um, uh, obsessed at the time with uh, Greco-Roman uh, sculpture, and it has this kind of sculptural quality to it. Uh, and and then, uh, yeah, I, I uh, what I like about working with uh, these uh, these rhythmic lines is that uh, they are dynamic, and they, uh, uh, um, uh, hopefully, they could even, uh, you know, if you stare at it long enough, uh, move a little bit, you know. Um, uh, yeah, it, they, they, uh, these rhythmic lines can be, uh, uh, can be employed to do certain things. They, uh, they can, uh, help tell a story. So yeah, uh, I'm glad that you experienced it that way. Yeah. Izzy, can we uh, see some of the, uh, let, let's see, uh, I got the, uh, the hat images. We haven't really. Uh, had a look at those. This this is uh, uh, Mia and Abby. Lots of uh, family uh, um, uh, paintings over here. I uh, I'm, I'm pretty partial to the lower one. You know, it really looks like uh, makes Abby look like a uh, uh, like she's got a flying saucer on her head. Yeah, full, full blown real. alien. Full blown. <laughs> What's that? The hair looks real. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I really enjoyed making these. And then the, the upper one is of Mia with uh, Mia's new hat, bending it forward over her face. Mm, 
I, I enjoyed making the, the shadow over her face, even though there was nothing that would cast a shadow like that over her face. Just a bunch of uh, rhythmic lines. And I think it would be uh, fun in the time that we have left to uh, take a look at the horse painting. Okay. Yeah, I love that. The horse fight. Yeah. Yeah, this is where Zigzag took a whole nother. And you said yesterday that almost looks just as good horizontal as well, right? Yeah, I, I've, I've experimented with uh, how to, uh, uh, how it should be um, displayed. Uh, and uh, you know it's it's eight feet high, so it's it's a pretty big uh, drawing. Um, and uh, yeah, I just think it's uh, you know there, there's no you know deep meaning to this. It's just uh, just to what uh, Hazel, to what the mom was saying uh, earlier. It's uh, how, you know uh, taking these zigzags and uh, trying to see. Uh, what you can do with them and how much, you know, this is just a, a fun kind of a, um, uh, a, 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 of a drawing. You know, not every drawing has to be uh, a very deep one. Uh, trying to play with the electricity of these uh, horses. And then if we could just go very quickly to the uh, two uh, images uh, to the right, uh, we have these, uh, I don't think we've uh, taken a look at these yet. Uh, these are kind of like these blank uh, heads over here and shaped around them are these uh, rhythmic faces. Um, these are stand-ins for, for you and me and, and everybody else. Uh, we all have people outside of ourselves these are, I think I call this faces in the crowd. And they're all kind of distorted a little bit. Maybe they're a little bit grotesque. Uh, and just in terms of the, uh, how the work evolved, uh, uh, all those, the, the zigzag work that we looked at earlier yeah. came from this. I mean, I, I just, I didn't know where to start. Uh, this is a, a style that I've played with in the past. And I just made these and somehow uh, um, I, I um, allowed myself to be open enough to create the, uh, the zigzag of your work. So that's kind of the, uh, uh, the story of, of how uh, uh, these joints there came. Was a, this was a spark, and then there was an electrical explosion. I'll take it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Every time I look, I see more. Mm. You definitely are winning that one and a half second thing, for <laughs> sure. You see different things the more you look at it, or you squint, or if you keep your eyes wide open, it's really interesting. Uh, the, the image to the uh, left of it is uh, kind of a smaller piece. Uh, you know, in those two images, the, um, uh, the heads uh, define the uh, faces around them. And in this, I thought, what would happen if they, uh, uh, if the faces outside started to uh, uh, encroach upon the uh, the silhouette, mm. and that was a little uh, experiment. There's social influence there. Yeah. There's four faces there. See if you can see them all. Let's see. Uh, are there four? One, two, three. That's five. The one in the middle. Uh -huh. Five with the one in the middle, yes. <laughs> Excellent. Izzy, mm -hmm. maybe you can um, uh, do some... Uh, oh, there's one piece of, uh, of Ivan's that we didn't talk about uh, yet. Of, of Vance. The Flower Mandela, uh, did we talk about that one? Yeah, that's the one. And then we'll get some, uh, just get some broad shots of the exhibit to, to send this out. And refreshments. And refreshments, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We can mingle and have some refreshments. So, Yvonne, I know this was one of your earliest pieces that kind of, you know, turned into the series that 
um, the God series, the particle series. What, um, you know, how did you get going on this and what was the inspiration? I mean, to layering the images and the mandala type representation. Um, so, yeah, so this whole series with the flowers and mandalas, um, that came before the God Particle series, and it kind of uh, almost like um, links into it, you know. Um, and I was just photographing. I was living in Beachwood Canyon, and I would go for a walk every day. And people just said we were in the neighborhood, and people there was flowers everywhere. Every you know, every front yard had some flowers. So I would just take a snapshot of one, you know, one flower and another one, because um, nature is one of my biggest inspirations, and it goes through my whole body of work. Uh, I had this whole series with trees before that, and uh, and then I just started. Um, actually reading the Upanishads and Bhagavad Gita, which is the Indian sacred text that 5,000 years, 5, years uh, old. And that in, in that moment, like when I was reading that and I was taking these photos of flowers at the kind of at the same time, uh, this whole series emerged, you know. And uh, again, uh, when I, I, I would I would make one piece and then I would that 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 piece would just emerge and would would start calling on me and then I would you know go and purposely you know create a series around it so that's that's uh, that's the flower mandala series that's how that that started for me right. again very healing very you know, meditative, and I think that that's that's one common, you know, goal in my whole in my art is healing, is getting you present, you know. And there was a, I think that's the story goes that Buddha had this sermon with with his disciples, and he would usually come out and talk to them uh, at this monastery, but that one sermon. He didn't say anything. He just came out on this, you know, podium or the stage, whatever, in front of them, and he was holding a flower. And that was going on for, you know, half an hour, an hour, as the story goes. And all of the disciples were like standing there and wondering, like, what the hell is this? Why is he not talking? You know, and so on. And all of a sudden, this one one monk burst into laughter he just started laughing and buddha just looked at him and he was like he's he's got it he's got it so there was something about he said there was something about flowers that uh the flower is one of the you know i think also eckhart tolle talks about it it's how uh earth laughs in flowers so it the flower is one one thing that will get you present the fastest you know like yeah you can get present if you just like look at a floor or you know a rock or anything but flower is uh is i guess the easiest way portal to to getting present beautiful great that's a nice uh that's a nice note to to end on and uh, we'll just get shots of the exhibit and uh, anybody that wants to chat with uh, any friends they've seen pop on we can say hello to each other and uh, we'll gradually just um, uh, jump off in another five minutes or so and if uh, you know if anyone wants to inquire about any artwork obviously message or you can reach us at uh, info at bgartdealings.com or Billy at bgartdealings.com. But I hope you guys really enjoyed the exhibit and we'll just let everyone mingle like you would at a regular exhibit and get some cheers in and everything else. I'm gonna uh, get Arthur, I'll be right back folks. Oh, here he is. Arthur, come back here. I know you wanna be here. Here we go. We want to see, we want to see Arthur. <laughs>
That's what they're here for. Yeah. Hey, uh, <laughs> oh, he's saying hello. They don't see. Yeah. Oh. You see. Hi, Arthur. Oh. Hey, Arthur. It's good to see you. All these people. Isn't that fascinating? And his namesake is in the exhibit. That's right. Grandpa Arthur. Let's show each of you. Let's look at this over here. It's a horse on it. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, there, there, there's some, if there are any smudge marks on the pieces, they look like this. Yeah. Hi, Hazel. Yeah. Oh, I'm unmuted. Oh, we can be unmuted. Okay. Hi, Hazel. Hello to me. Hi, Hazel. Who's that? Janet. Oh, uh, hi, Janet. Let me find you. Oh, hi. How are Janet, you? Hey, nice to see you. you. Nice to see you, too. Now we're schmoozing. This is the official yeah. schmoo uh, schmooze. Isn't that great? Yeah. Hey, Carrie. Where, where are you? Carrie, Carrie was here. <laughs> I think she moved on. Uh, why should come and take a look over here? I'm still here. I'm just, my computer is far away from me because I'm charging. Can you see me, Harry? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of like the only time you can social, like Janet said, schmooze without people in mass. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Hazel. Hey, Cindy. I love your um, game. 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 Jane. Can you hear me? Jane? Oh, Jane. She's on mute. Jane, I I loved your I loved your sketch, Jane. She's muted. You can ask her. She can hear you. Oh, that's so cute. Uh oh. <laughs> do they do that a lot? No, no, we put some time. So we we hear you, Lucy. Hi guys. Jerome, can you lift Arthur a little higher? Hi guys. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> hi Arthur. Lucy, <laughs> so hi Arthur. Can you say hi to everybody? Hello. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Arthur. Family reunion over here. Really? It's <laughs> pretty funny, actually. <laughs> hey, let's see your apartment. <laughs> Me? Hello with two hands. Uh, now. Oh, say it with both hands. Don't touch the computer. No. Think yes. <laughs> beeping again. That's you. No, I don't beep. Doggy. Is it time to go? Yeah, six twelve. I think they close at seven. Okay. Uh, oh, up. Okay. Yeah. 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 Long okay. We have to we go. Have to go. <laughs> oh, oh, bye, Bruce. Bye. 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 It's good to see everyone. Congratulations yeah. to all of you. Yes. Yeah. Nice, see you. nice seeing your faces. Bye. Congratulations, Yaron. Congratulations, Ivan. Thank you, Very folks, nice. for coming. Thank you for spending time with us. I have to go to make the kid dinner. Great show, guys. Ivan, you're right. Congratulations. And thank you, Billy, for having for, uh, all of you. Thank you so Peace much, you invite me. Hi, Thanks, Arthur. Hi. Hi, Arthur. Hi, 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 you. Um, Hi nice Ken. Day, Billy. Sorry, someone said something to me. I just said oh. nice to see you. You too. <laughs> Chalda, thank you. Excellent. Well, th thanks for joining That's us, so everyone. The, uh, uh, the show is officially launched. So uh, there'll be uh, all sorts of 3D uh, models of it and a lot of online <laughs> things and, and other events coming up. So, Hi, Hazel. Uh, Hi, sir. Well, good night, everybody. And we'll Bye. see you next time. Good time. So glad we could share this together. Okay, great to see you, everybody. Bye, Jane. Bye. Bye, Bye Arthur. Great job, you're on. Excellent job. Excellent.